This video explains how to calculate a contingency table across multiple columns using the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video, I will show you an example, and this example is based on the data frame that we can create with the lines 2 to 6 of the code. So after running these lines of code, a new data set called data is appearing at the top right. And we can print this data frame to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line 7 of the code. And then you can see that we have created a data frame containing nine rows, the three columns x1, x2 and x3, which contain dummy variables, as well as a group indicator. Now, if we want to create a contingency table across multiple columns of our data frame, or more precisely across the columns x1, x2 and x3, then we can apply the code that you can see in lines 9 and 10. And in these lines of code, I'm using the t function, the sapply function, as well as a user-defined function in which I'm using the tapply and sum functions. Within the user-defined function, I also have to specify the name of the column that I want to use for the grouping of our data. And in the sapply function, I have to specify the three columns for which I want to calculate the contingency table. So this code is relatively complex. However, I will put the entire code that I have used in this video into the description of the video. So you could simply copy and paste it from there and use it for your own application. However, after running lines 9 and 10 of the code, a new data set is appearing at the top right, which is called data count. And we can print this data set to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line 11 of the code. And then you can see that we have created a contingency table across multiple columns of a data frame. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.